Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. A common issue that you might have with any Porter Studio or Yamaha or Fostix or whatever branded multi-track cassette recorder that has a external AC to DC adapter is if that input pin is circuit board mounted then the stress of having the plug inserted and removed can cause the contacts to break and just meaning that the unit doesn't get any power at all. When I was doing the teardown video for the 414 Mark II we discovered that that was the case with the input socket here and I hope that's visible but the soldering seat is partly broken here that's an earth contact so that's not super essential it's really there to reinforce the strength of that joint but you can maybe see that I'm not entirely sure whether that's the negative or the positive pin but this is completely detached and that will prevent this socket from working altogether. So I'm going to desolder these contacts and resolder them. I think that the copper trace has come away from the board beneath so much on this one that I probably will need to do a bit of scraping away of the green non-conductive paint that's over the copper trace so that I can bend this pin over and create a, an electrical bridge to the exposed metal here. So first things first, I've got my soldering iron heated up and I find it's a little bit easier to suck up excess solder and wipe away the remnants with desoldering wick if you've already introduced some fresh solder into the joints. I'll reheat that solder and suck it up with a solder sucker. The copper trace has come away completely, but you can see that that's a little electrical island that's not really going to do anything. So I think so long as I can bend that over, maybe put a spot of glue in it, then it doesn't matter too much that that's happened. If you get that happening with an electrically critical joint, then you do need to remedy that in some way. I said earlier that I thought that was ground. Actually, I can see that this pad is joined to some sort of component here. So I'll demonstrate the way that you can um, get around that with this joint here. In this case I'll just wipe this bit of contact into the ball of iron wool that I'm using to clean the soldering iron. I'll get the last of the solder away from this joint using the soldering wick. You can see that's free from there altogether now. The next step is to scrape the green paint away from this area because I'm going to want to bend this pin over so it goes across this break in the copper and uh, bridges both those bits of metal. I just gently scrape with the blade right angles to the green paint just enough until you start to see the glimmer of the metal beneath. I'm pushing the socket from the far side through the board as far as it will go in the hopes of bending this pin. That's actually a bit stubborn. It's quite a strong piece of metal. Let's see if we can... Right, oh, it's going. Now if I fill that in with solder then I should have a good electrical contact from that pin to this area here and therefore to this component. Now if this was really badly damaged what I could do is desolder that as well and get some sort of jumper wire going from that component around that pin and that would probably do the trick as well. It's going to be very difficult to bend that over without cracking the board. So what I'll do is I'll put some uh, super glue on that once I've made this joint. If you've got solder with a rosin core, which I do, then it's not necessary to add additional rosin, but I'm, I'm going to in this case. If you're ever in doubt about whether a joint you've made is good, you can use a diode tester to make sure that there is an electrical connection between these points. It's not perfect work, but it's done the trick. Now, I'm going to add some super glue to this joint, since I can't solder it. It's probably too much. I'll quickly put the excess on this side. In fact, you can see that this is uh, cracked completely, so it may have been worth me replacing that socket altogether, but I'm probably going to keep this for my own use, so what I'll do is just use a little bit more glue. I'm at that awesome, I'm getting myself stuck to myself with super glue stage. I've started gluing this fabric that I've got down on the table. I'll leave that somewhere to dry where I can't 
glue it to anything else and later on I'll show you footage confirming that that has worked. And you can see that's coming on. Yeah, so it's definitely receiving power. Thanks for watching. Ask me any questions you like about Port Studio Repair, I'll do my best to answer them. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos about fixing Port Studios, using them. Bye for now.